Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode 14 of the Dinosaur Review Show. Today we're going to be talking about Cetacosaurus, and we're going to be looking at a couple really cool figures. Cetacosaurus is from Mongolia. That is where we find most of their fossils. Before we jump into it, George, what is the fossil record for this dinosaur? Incredible. Would you believe me if I told you this is the dinosaur that has the best dinosaur butt ever preserved? Yep. Is this one the, the best dinosaur butt? This, this is the best dinosaur butt ever preserved. Not just the cloaca, which its impression is impressive, but the quills on it are the reason that we think some horn dinosaurs, which are relatives of these guys, had quills on their tails. And not just that, but scales. So we have skeleton, skin, impressions, and quills. Let's get started, George. We have five different figures to look at today. Which one would you like to start with? Let's do Collect A. So Cetacosaurs were really small. They're about dog size, and they're related to the Ceratopsians, which are the horned dinosaurs. As you know, Triceratops is the most famous of that. So this Collect A Cetacosaurus does have a very nice coloration. This is actually very close to what the coloration we think it would have been. And if we look at the feet they have one two three four toes and then one two three plus one inner toe that's very accurate i will say its cheekbones aren't sticking out as much as they would they're pretty small on this figure and if you look closer at its scales they are very faint spots and stripes on them leading to the quills in the back which again are the biggest feature on this dinosaur um, I gotta say, this this is a pretty pretty solid one. Let's take a look at the Safari LTD one next, George. Okay, now we've got a lot more color and textures. And look at those cheekbones. They're a little bit more pronounced, but it's still a little too flat for my liking. But the beak, uh, unlike the other one, is closed. And there's no articulation on this one, but I do like figures that have closed mouth. The arms on this one are more of arms than legs. See, they're facing inwards, which is good. And they have the one, two, three, four. There's one on the side. Fingers in the front. And then these are four in the back, which all of them have claws. But that tiny little nub there does not. Looking at the underside of this Cetacosaurus, you can see that it has the cloaca. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is one of the dinosaurs with the best preserved cloaca. Now, these were not obligate quadrupeds, which means dinosaurs that have to walk on four legs. They could have switched between two legs or four legs, so this is still accurate. The quills, they are individually defined, which is very neat. You may notice there's a lot of spots on this dinosaur, which if we look at the skin studies done on the skin impressions, you can actually look under a microscope and look at the cell shapes of the scales and you can determine color. So the color of this dinosaur was determined to be a dark brown on the top, a tan on the bottom, and have these dark spots running throughout the body. So this is one of the dinosaurs who we actually know the color of. Let's take a look at the Schleich for your next, George. Has anybody, whoever's watching, seen the Transformers movie, Age of Extinction? Because this looks just like the one in that movie. I don't know if they took um, some inspiration from that, Speaking of color, let's take a look at the next figure. This one is, this one has got the other figures beat when it comes to the color department, but it's not the accurate color. As we mentioned earlier, it should have the top brown coloration with a tan on the bottom and some dark spots running throughout the body. But I do love that kind of rouge color on the face. And speaking of the face, you have those cheekbones that are sticking out the way that they should, which is a homage to their relationship to the horned dinosaurs. If we look at their feet, much like the horned dinosaurs, the, t the front three should have the hoof. And then there's a little finger there on the side that is really small that does not have a um, hoof. If we look at the back feet, we have three forward facing ones and one inner one, so that's accurate. No cloaca, unfortunately, but the quills are there. So I gotta say this one, even though it's not the right color, it does a decent job. All right, George, let's look at the first of two figures from Beasts of the Mesozoic. Okie dokie. Here is the Beasts of the Mesozoic Cetacosaurus, and my goodness, I love the coloration. It is already accurate. See that dark brown I was talking about, and then that tan color on the bottom? 
I'm not seeing much of the spots. Let's take a look at the skull. It's cheekbones aren't protruding as much, um, but I guess maybe it could be a sexual dimorphism thing. So maybe only the males had it and the females didn't. If we look at the hands, they're facing inwards and look, that finger is elongated in comparison to the other ones, but they still have that tiny nub that does not have a, um, a hoof. Look at the back feet. You got those four toes with the hooves. Classic. And do we have a cloaca? I do not see one. It does not have a cloaca. If we look on the back of the tail, we do see the quills. And I love that they get darker near the top. It's very much like a porcupine's quill. Very nice. The articulation points are there. And the torso, the neck, the mouth opens. That's new. Look at that. And then the arms can open to give you a big hug. <laughs> I gotta say, I, I really like the articulation this one has. Um, very poseable. And if you do not like the way the legs are bent in this position, they do come with some extra spare legs. So you can pop them right in whenever you need to or want to, and it'll have a different pose. And let's take a look at the larger figure then from Beast of Mesozoic. This is definitely a beast. But look at that detail. I like that the eye is kind of a golden color. It really jumps out with the rest of the coloration of the figure. And look, this one has spots. Just what I was mentioning in the other figure, this one does have it. They're mostly found in the chest and shoulder area, but there were some closer to the back legs, but they don't seem to be in this figure. If we look at the skull, you can see the, the cheekbones are protruding a bit more than they would have in the other figure. And they have that keratinous sheath for protection very good and the jaw is articulated look at that looking at the hands we have that extended digit with the one that doesn't have a hoof but look at that it, its fingers even have articulation look at that amount of detail uh, if we move on to the feet we have four toes very good and they all have hooves and they also articulate um, the tail does come separate so you will have to attach it when you get it but those quills are individually sculpted and they have a see-through film. That's new. I've never seen anything like that before. So you can see my finger move behind the quills. Again, they kind of look darker on the top than they do in the bottom, which I, I appreciate that. Time for the cloaca test. No cloaca. Ah, oh, well, can't say I'm too disappointed not to see that. And just like the mini fig, it can also open up to give you a hug. <laughs> so this is the large piece of the Mesozoic. It's a tachosaurus. And that comes with a stand also, correct? You're right. It does come with a stand. Silly me. I forgot that it does come with a stand. I, say, I really like it with the base. All right, George, mugshot time. Let's take a look at the head side by side. What's jumping out at you? Well, the Schleich one does have bigger cheekbone protrusions than the others. The others seem to be pretty consistent with only the larger piece of the Mesozoic having those um, keratinous sheaths all over the the cheeks, the other ones seem to be covered by skin. So this keratinous sheath is what covers the cheekbone instead of skin. So that is more scientifically accurate on the beast of the Mesozoic figure. When you look at these guys, they do not have a keratinous sheath that is clearly shown there. In terms of accuracy, these guys do not fit the bill. I gotta say, I do like the skull of the Cetacosaurus from Schleich, but scientifically speaking, the larger beast of the Mesozoic one is the most accurate when it comes to that. All right, George. Let's take a look at the tail, since that seems to be a critical feature on these models. Yeah, so they all pass the quill test. They all have quills. However, I gotta say, only one of these figures have quills individually defined, and that's the larger beast of the Mesozoic. Although I will give points to the, um, the Schleich model for attempting this. They do have a series of holes in the area of the quills to kind of show that they're individuals instead of one sheet. Like the other smaller figures, they kind of do that probably for stability or just to keep it together in packaging. So I understand that. But, you know, Beast of the Mesozoic found a solution by adding a clear film in between them. So it looks like they're individual, but they're actually partly supported at the bottom. So in reality, these would all be individual quills. And would they be just one single row of quills down the back? Or would it be kind of a cluster of, you know, three or four in a bunch making a row? You know, that is a very good question. I am not sure because when you look at fossils, they're laterally compressed. So that means they are on a 2D plane. So what we're looking at is basically the side view of a fossil. 
to really get a top view to see how many rows there are is pretty difficult based on how different fossils preserve. As far as we know, it's just one row though. Let's take a look at the skin and texture side by side, George. Anything jumping out at you? The Schleich one is really bumpy. That one has too many osteoderms in my opinion. It, it looks almost armored, which we know that they weren't. The coloration and patterns, they go all over the place. So on one hand, we have the Schleich figure that I've been talking about being completely green and with hints of pink, but then the other figures kind of going for more earth tones. I will say that the yellowish coloration with the polka dots, the spots, is my favorite coloration of these figures because it is closer to the patterning of the original Stachosaurus, even though the complete color isn't completely dark brown. I like the color. <laughs> And that figure from Safari LTD was the only one with the cloaca also, correct? Yes, it was also the only one with the cloaca. All right, well, that leads us into decision time, George. If money is no object, which figure are you going to add to your collection? If money was no object, I'd probably pick the large um, Beast of the Mesozoic, mostly because of that definition of the quills. It's, it's important for someone like me to have those scientific details in a figure. So even though I really like the Safari coloration having those features that are preserved be more accurate is more important to me. All right, which one would you pick next? I would say it's a tie between the, no, it's not a tie. I like the Safari one a little bit better than the Schleich. So if I had to do a tier list, it'd be the Beast of the Mesozoic large figure, then the Safari figure, then Schleich, and then the um, Collect A1. The small Beast of the Mesozoic, I'd probably place between the large one and the Schleich one. So it would be a tie between the small Beast of the Mesozoic and the Safari one for me. Thanks for confusing us, George. Safari. I like A, but then B, but then C, but then D is better than B. <laughs> There's lots of factors to consider. I'm sure everybody at home understands. So generally what I'm hearing is that none of these are total disasters like we've seen in some other species. Correct. There we go. George has spoken. That concludes this episode. Thank you for watching. If you liked this episode, please give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and we will see you in the next episode.